the women's side, I had always feared for the majority of my career as a dancer because I was behind. that Andreas Hofer's grandma's name was Mariah Palmer, and Philip Palmer saw so the same name, <laughs> and she was an ancestor of mine. So uh, this was one more reason to make the, the film, and I'm very strong connected, of course, because this is my homeland. Uh, what I find, you talk about your uh, ancestors, and uh, what I found uh, great in the movie was that there's very strong female characters. Okay. Not many uh, movies, history dramas also about Andreas who have <laughs> really strong female characters in here. There are three you know, strong female characters. Um, and I'm sure you wrote that on purpose, the script like that. Yeah, of course. So, so my first intention maybe was also um, to show more about, uh, about this rebellion, about this war but I didn't have enough money to do it. So um, I decided to, to choose a new angle, and it was the female angle to, to watch uh, this rebellion, because I guess it was a, a very hard work to keep the families together, and um, yeah, it was, it, it was also a, a kind of a never told story, because Andreas Hofer's wife, Anna Hofer, which played here um, a kind of a bigger part than in all other movies um, and Katharina and also Elizabeth on, uh, on the farm uh, they were very str strong women and yeah it was quite important to show also this part of, of this history um, you shot the movie on location in Südtirol in the northern part of Italy which back then was part of the Austrian Empire, but it's now Italy since World War I. Um, and you are from there originally. Yeah. From yes. the I'm Italian. <laughs> uh, how was the support of the, of the community there? I think there also a lot of, you had an exceptional talented cast, but you also had a lot of locals working in the film, I think. Um, and you did a screening there. I heard it uh, had more viewers in <laughs> Uh, in that part of Italy than Avatar had. So, uh, how was the reception? The reception was great, but it didn't start like this, because when I started to, to come to the people with this idea, they never had seen before a film camera or a film team. And so we had to start very slowly, and uh, we had to explain what, what we want to do. And, um, Especially at this farm, there was uh, there was a farmer living there. Uh, he was born on this farm. He is now more than eighty years old, and he just sees four or five times a year other people uh, from outside his farm. And then we came there uh, with a whole film team and fifty people, and he was just shocked for the first moment. But then uh, he enjoyed like. Uh, like the rest of the valley and everyone tried to help us to tell the story and I think it's really important to tell the history because we can learn a lot uh, about history also for, for our present and the future. Um, talking about the farm, I think you also said that there was, uh, it was very um, basic up there, there was hardly any electricity how did you deal with that, uh, with the production where you, you know, need a lot of energy? You know, if you decide to shoot on 1,600 meters over the sea, and uh, yeah, it was like this, um, my DOP was very grateful and he was just freaking out because of the pictures, but it was very difficult for the production to, to shoot there, and um, yeah, we had to to come with the cars and all the team every day. Uh, it took more than one hour to get there on the mountains, and also with the electricity, we had to to make. Maybe you can say it in English. I'm not sure about this. I told you before. Like dig hole. Like you had to put from the village up to the farm, yeah, which right. is almost over four miles. You had to dig a hole and 
put the line up to yeah. the farm. Mm -hmm. So it was not generators, I think you said, it was yeah. you, you, you put a new line up to the... But then we were free to shoot and we could shoot on 360 degrees and the only thing um, which was difficult was um, the was dark? the roof the roof of of this farm which was uh, not historical authentical so uh, we did this new it uh, cost us a bit of money <laughs> but not so much we had uh, support from uh, from people from the valley and yeah now this farm is like we could see it in a movie um, a very original farm 250 years old part of our history and I'm very I'm very grateful that we saved this farm and this place uh, here on satellites on this movie and uh, yeah it will be for for the eternity saved in this movie and also the history of Andreas Hofer. Yeah. How did you deal, you know, watching the movie, there's so many, you know, you go through the entire, all the seasons of the year. How did you deal with that? What was your shooting schedule like? Yeah, we had appro approximately um, 45 shooting days, but um, it was written in a screenplay that we had to show the spring the summer, the fall, and the winter. So the shooting was taking more than one year um, with different periods. But it was important to show the whole year of this rebellion, <coughs> 1809, um, starting with the young couple coming to Tyrol and um, ending with the execution of Andreas Hofer and Mantova. Um, you also told me earlier that um the citizens of the village were very supportive as far as opening their houses, bringing, you know, like tools, bringing original lederhosen and, and dirndl and all the original wares that they had during that time. And I also think the rosary was very special. It was a very original piece. It was. So uh, besides the clothes, and I have to say it another time, we hadn't enough money to, to buy all these things. So. Uh, people support us with their own uh, clothes and um, also uh, some um, requis rec requisites. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, props. 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 <laughs> props. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, we were also in contact with the original Andreas Hofer Museum. Um, and there was this rosary, this black rosary chain, which was the original chain of Andreas Hofer, uh, more than 200 years old. And we had this as a prop in our movie, and it was a, a very magic moment um, shooting this scene with, with this original piece of history. Uh, talking about magic moments, one of the magic moments in the movies is also uh, the mountains that you so beautifully show and the landscape of Südtirol and I think you also have a very special relationship to the mountains of Südtirol. I have, yeah. I grew up there and for me, you know, besides the main uh, characters in this movie, one of the main characters for me are the mountains which are, um, which are, uh, Which are um, What's the uh, which are influencing uh, the life of the people. They are very much. If you grew up on a mountain, um, so much kilometers away from civilization or any support you can get, you have to make it by your own. And uh, people there, it was a quite ridiculous idea, fighting against Napoleon and this uh, huge army. Um, but they did, and maybe they did it because they uh, they trust uh, themselves, and uh, they were yeah they grew up on the mountains, and they were habituated to um, yeah to solve problems like this. I hope you can understand. <laughs> Strange, Durovian. 
English, okay. Uh, let's open up to some questions for the, from the audience. Are there any questions? The movie came out 200, you filmed 200 years uh, yeah. after, exactly 200 years to the day after the rebellion in Tirol. Uh, was there, did that help you in the funding of the movie? And it's amazing if you think about this is the thesis for a student film. Uh, you hardly ever see such an amazing, it's like a blockbuster. And you know, to get the funding to do that, and especially the aerial shots, how did you go about the funding of the movie? Um, yeah, it was, also this was, I guess, quite a ridiculous idea. And many people told me, um, if we started, you will, yeah, you will never shoot a, a period piece about this, it's not possible. Um, but um, we had this idea and um, I wrote the screenplay and we had two countries, Bavaria and Tyrol, and we had uh, the luck that it's, uh, we were shooting exactly 200 years later, so the rebellion was 1809 and the shooting was on 2009. And um, yeah, uh, we made it happen and we succeed doing it. Uh, gentlemen of the glasses. I, uh, I like the fact that you don't really see much of the battles and it feels more intimate in that sense and they explain things that happen in the battle and you just hear about them and to me that's more horrific. Like if you had a bigger budget, would you have, do you think you would have shot those scenes or because I like it the way it, you know, with, without the, shooting it. The question was that it was uh, so great to see, uh, to, to not, not see the battles graphically, to just, you know, leave it to the audience's uh, vision. And uh, the question was if uh, Philip would have had a higher budget if he would have shown the battle. So um, I knew this before, this was, uh, this was kind of a preamble before writing the screenplay, if I would know that, I would have, have the um, uh, 10 times uh, as much uh, as, as the budget was, maybe I would uh, wrote another screenplay, but with this uh, budget, I think we made the best of it, and I think it's, it's working, yeah, right, uh, yeah. Very beautiful. Um, I have a question. So you were a student when you were creating this. Um, how long did it take you to get through the draft of the screenplay that you wanted to use, your script? And uh, a lot of American students think it's a much smaller story for their student film. And so yours is so grand. Were you scared at all writing something this big? Or did you, did you not think it was big? <laughs> Did everyone understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, I had this idea, and um, <laughs> the most difficult moment for me was the moment when I decided for myself to make this movie. <laughs> uh, it was before I started to write the screenplay. I was 22 years old, and I remember that I was lying in my bed, it was night, and my heart starts to beat, and uh, then I decided to make it, and after this decision, I, I wasn't afraid. Uh, it, it was for sure a huge mountain, but like every mountain you can, uh, you can climb and hike, and if you're on the summit, you have to look for the next mountain. It's like this. <laughs> Matthew? Yeah, um, you had talked about, the, obviously it's based on the story of um, Mr. Hofer, but how much of the Egger family story was based in fact and how much was your invention? Yeah, this is a good question. I, I did uh, a lot of research because um, when I started first to write the screenplay, I realized very soon that I didn't know enough to about this time to write something like this. So I, I read more than 20 books uh, playing in this time. And um, sorry, what was the question? How much was based in, how much was based in traditional character? Yeah, 
And I discovered that in 1809, um, there were three women from Bavaria living in the Pasaya Valley with, uh, with husbands from the valley. So it was, um, it was realistic, but um, the story you can see in the film, uh, the fictional story was invented by my fantasy, but I think it's, it's quite realistic, so. <laughs> you should meet my mom. <laughs> Who would she be in the kind of... <laughs> Talk about uh, family, I, I read a story also that uh, there were some um, Tyrolean dishes that you had to kind of eat as a child that you absolutely didn't like. Yeah. And that's what you base the kartoffel soup on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not only the kartoffel soup, but it's also the, the mousse. This is this uh, in the plant. Yes, plant. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, if they are sitting at the tail, you can see it's it's, it's oh, kind of this white. Uh, like in Sterz, uh, is it? Or yeah, it, it's with. No. In good times, they made it it's with. It's like bread, I guess. Wheat and water, and in bad time, oh, gruel. Good it's times. Like it's like bread. Gruel. How do you call it? Gruel. Gruel. <laughs> and I hated this as a child. My, my parents always uh, forced me to eat it, but I hated it. And in this movie, I tried to, uh, yeah, to solve this problem from my childhood. <laughs> and uh, all the actors doing this, and we had to shoot the scenes a lot of times. And always, if I said, cut, thank you, they were spooning it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. Also, <laughs> Uh, the situation obviously in Europe changed the last 200 years now with the European Union. Yeah. Südtirol is part of Italy nowadays. Uh, how did the situation change though in, in, in Tirol uh, and the relationship to Bavarians or to Germans? How does it look like nowadays? And uh, also can you talk a bit about the cooperation between an Italian director and a German producer for the film? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I, I am a very good example in, in that sense that, that I'm uh, from South Tyrol, I'm Italian, and I could uh, study at the Munich Film School, which is one of the best in Germany. So, um, and also the idea to make 200 years after this, uh, this ugly war between uh, Tyrolians and Bavarians, to make this project together in peace, it was it was a very good sign for the future to to learn about common history and to build a new future about. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and also my producer, which uh, is a Bavarian, Florian Reimann, who produced this movie. Um, we had both sides, and we also tried to to show this, uh, this chapter, this very important chapter of history of both countries from two perspectives. So not only the Tyrolean part, like in some of the movies which already exist about Andreas Hofer. Um, yeah, to see also this Bavarian girl, uh, which, uh, which uh, has to learn how to live in Tyrol, how to, um, yeah, uh, who also sees where the problems, I mean, the Bavarian people, I like them very much, but at this time they, uh, yeah, they did a lot of, uh, of bad things, so the rebellion was, I understand why the people made this rebellion there, so they are trying now, uh, like 200 years ago, just to keep their, uh, their roots, their traditions, and we should be tolerant and respect this because every every particular uh, thing of a culture is something which makes us rich and which can make the world better. But isn't the movie also about uh, which you can relate to modern days about prejudice and how we deal with different cultures and how we invite different cultures into our homes? And I think you captured that very nicely with that movie. 
Uh, the last thing I want to ask you is, uh, will you in every movie now have a cameo and your Hitchcock moment, <laughs> or? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if if Did everyone, everyone see him in the saw, last scene on the yeah. balcony. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the balcony. I don't know why, but uh, we we didn't have so much actors speaking this Tyrolean language, this dialect. So um, my whole family was involved, and all my brothers were involved, and my other brother told me, "You you have to." You have to have a, a appearance too, and so I used this last scene just standing on the balcony and looking a bit uh, like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my last question: What's in the future for you? Are you having projects in the pipeline in Germany? Are you? Thinking of working in the United States, what's... Uh... Yeah, uh, I'm still writing on uh, three screenplays. Um, two of them are located between um, South Tyrol, the mountains, and Bavaria, M Munich. This is something I really like because I'm very close and I grew up there. But one of them is just a German screenplay uh, playing, uh, playing between Berlin and... Uh, Cologne, but I would love to make a film here in the US. This was one of the reasons why I decided to become a movie director. So if you if you knew Steven Spielberg or uh, another producer, just let him know that I'm here. I'm here till Sunday, and I hope we can have a drink now at the after party. That is available for meetings, and uh, if you have more questions, or if you just wanna. Hang out with us, have fun, have a drink. We'll walk over to the GW Marriott at the lobby bar and we'll meet there. There's a little after party. Please uh, come over and uh, uh, hang out with us. Uh, independent film wouldn't be anything without you, the audience. So please spread the word. Uh, the movie will be traveling across the United States to Denver and Chicago next. We have screenings here every month. Uh, the next screening will be uh, December 11 here, another German movie, Reclaim Your Brain, with Moritz Bleibtreu, uh, by an Austrian director, Hannes Weingartner. Uh, there will also be a Q&A next, uh, December 11 here, December 12th in North Hollywood. Check out our website, filmfestivalflix.com. Uh, tell friends about it, they can stream the movies there, they can download them, they can purchase DVDs, the schedule is there, sign up for the newsletter. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, at the end, please, another round of applause for Philip. <laughs> and also for you.